so grateful and thankful for the questions that have been sent in. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit who's our counselor and our teacher. He is the spirit of truth. He'll lead us and guide us and direct us in all the word of truth. We thank you for magnifying Jesus, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, now this last question is an anonymous question, and um, it's a good one. Is it okay to drink as a Christian? Now, it's funny because we, we get this all the time from our friends because I, I stopped drinking, I don't mm -hmm. drink, I don't smoke anymore, yeah. any of that. And, you know, it's always, well, you know, Jesus, he, taught, he turned water into alcohol, he turned water into wine, it's in the Bible, that's how they put it out to mm -hmm. So they say wine is in the Bible, it's okay to drink it. So I want to know from you. Is it all right? I know the answer already, but <laughs> you guys need to know the answer. Right? You guys need to know it in the Bible too. <laughs> well, the scripture teaches mm -hmm. that you know, the, when Jesus turned water into wine, mm -hmm. the Greek word is the word glucose, which means sugar or grape juice, freshly squeezed grape juice. Right. It's not talking about those things that would cause an individual to be intoxicated. So the Bible speaks against drinking of alcohol because it distorts judgment. And anything that distorts your judgment leaves you open to the attack of the enemy. Yes. So in scripture it talks about, as believers we should be drunk with the Holy Ghost. We shouldn't be drunk on the wine which people prepare that distorts judgment. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter five, and oftentimes people refer to the Apostle Paul when he told, told uh, uh, Timothy he told him to take a little wine and mix it with his water. And they thought, well, Paul told Timothy to drink wine, right. but he told him to do that for medicinal purposes. It was not for him to get high because Timothy normally didn't drink wine, didn't normally take alcohol at all. How do you know? Because he said, don't drink water only, but take a little wine for your stomach's sake and often infirmity. And so in Ephesians chapter five, the scripture says in verse 17, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things, and the Father in the name, unto God, unto the... In verse 20 again, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here he says, don't get drunk with wine. It is excess. Now in the book of Proverbs, Solomon, who was a king, who was told by his mother in Psalms, I mean in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, Solomon's mother strictly warned him about getting drunk with wine or participating with wine or any type of alcoholic beverage. He said in Proverbs chapter 31, in verse 4, he says, It is not for kings or Lemuel, which is the son of my endearment, son of my womb. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. So he's saying, people are going to drink, you can't stop them from drinking. But those who drink should be those who are going to try to forget their misery. Those are the people who are going to be sentenced to death. Those individuals who are in a place in life where they're just completely given up. Those individuals are going to find a way to get high. So he, his mom told him, look, they're going to get high, let them get high. But the people who are actually doing things and are in a position of authority and are going to bless humanity and are going to do the will of God, you have no business drinking. Because drinking distorts judgment. And there's plenty of things that Solomon had to say concerning drinking. Do not drink. Here's another one in the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 29, 
Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babblings? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder, which is a poisonous serpent. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. It means you're going to lose your mind. And you're going to do some things you normally wouldn't do if you was in your right mind. So a person intoxicated will make decisions that will cause them sorrow in time to come. So they'll behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse, perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as one that lieth down in the midst of the sea. That means you're going to be really woozy as one who's traveling on the sea with seasickness. And as one that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will see it again, seek it again. So he says, there's an addictive nature to alcohol, and God does not want Christians to be brought under addiction to anything other than the addiction to the ministry of the saints. So if you're addicted to the word of God, you're rightfully addicted to something good. If you're addicted to the Holy Ghost and teaching the people of God and allowing the people of God to see that they to live a good covenant life, you're addicted to the right thing. But to drugs and alcohol, you're told not to partake of it because there are consequences that you will be sorry for. Yeah. I like that. Now smoking, because uh, since we're always talking about wine, we already talking about wine. We. Mm -hmm. Because I know mm -hmm. people, you got people who are always talking about, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> like the tobacco, all they talking about, it comes from the earth, how could it be wrong for me, you know, God put it, you know, a plant here for us that relaxes it, all that type of stuff. Right, <laughs> well, well people don't yeah. want to take strychnine, mm -hmm. people don't want to take hemlock, but people do want to take the herb. They say, I don't mind partaking of the herbal essence. In other words, if God told Adam to partake of the herbs of the ground which were provided for him, then there shouldn't be any problem with partaking of weed. Well, marijuana, weed, tie stick, you name it, whatever it's called, God knows that it's not good for you because it changes your judgment. And anything that distorts your judgment drops your defenses, keeps you from being in a position where you're making wise decisions. God doesn't want you to participate in it at all because it has the same effect as wine. It would cause an individual to be with somebody that they know they shouldn't be with. It would cause an individual to do things that they normally would not do. So God says, leave it alone because it has sorrow with it and he doesn't want you to be sorrowful at all. Now there are other places in the scripture where it talks about, uh, it doesn't say weed but it does talk about you know wine like for example Proverbs chapter 20 and some people say well I'm drinking wine because after all I just like the taste Are you alive you drinking because you want to get that buzz on you self medicate you just want to get it on you figure I got to unwind well we understand you got to unwind but that's not the way to unwind the best way to unwind is with the new wine of the Holy Ghost do not unwind with alcohol and drugs because it will cause you to be bound up in some problems you don't want to be involved in. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. It says, wine is a mocker. Some people say, well, I don't mess around with strong drink. I just drink with a little wine. But he says here, wine is a mocker. That means it's going to laugh at you. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So he tells you, if you think that you can mess around with alcohol and it's not going to have an addictive uh, pull on you, you are deceived thereby. And God does want you to be addicted, but again, he wants you to be addicted to the ministry of the saints. He wants you to be addicted to doing the work of God by the Holy Spirit. Be addicted to Jesus. Stay in the Word and get your buzz on through the Word. Right. Amen. I'm addicted to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so am I. I like that. I like that verse. I didn't know. I haven't heard of that one. 
That's yeah. a good one. I'm going to use that one next time. <laughs> People talking yeah. about that. <laughs> I was ministering yeah. to a guy about that, and uh, I told him, I said, listen, if you get high on the Holy Ghost, you will really be high in a way that the police can't arrest you. Mm -hmm. You can't. You won't get an out in, in, in the accidents. That's right. You can't get a DUI. You can always pass the sobriety test, <laughs> but you will also be towed up in the Holy Ghost. It's a beautiful thing to get high with the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible describes that there were individuals that did get high with the Holy Spirit, and they're called getting drunk with the new wine. That new wine from above, yeah, that, there's just nothing to be compared to. Everything else is a counterfeit. The high you're really looking for is that buzz on the Holy Ghost. And I'm like a pusher of the Holy Ghost. And I know who you are too. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Definitely. So there you have it. That's our first five questions that asked Pastor Ziegler. Um, you can send your questions to my Facebook. Uh, it's official Kel Mitchell. You can also send it to my Twitter. I am Kel Mitchell. And then you can also send it to the Spirit Food Twitter, which is at Spirit Food. You can send it there. And then you can also send it to our Facebook, which is Spirit Food Christian www.myspiritfood.com. And that's our website. Check us out. And, and then also come to the church too. Like now, if you want to be saved and you want to get that high we were talking about, that Holy Ghost high and addicted to Jesus and just uh, feel right, get saved. Those of you who say, I would like to have a personal relationship with God the Father, I want to pray this prayer. Pray with us. Repeat these words after me. We're going to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you're going to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's pray. Dear God, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is born of a virgin, that you raised him from the dead, that you sent him so that I could be redeemed from my sins. Jesus, I believe in all my heart that you are raised from the dead. I confess with my mouth. You are now my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Wash me clean with your blood. I will live for you all the days of my life. Dear God, my Father, thank you for being my Father because I am now your child through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. I have called upon his name. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, stay strong, especially when times get rough and people don't laugh.